fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. I guess everyone knows what Wheaties, Tricks, Sugar Jets, Cheerios, and Kicks cereal boxes look like. But right now, your grocer has some that are real different. Just turn them around, and presto, you're looking at a magic Disneyland park light up. Light them up with Christmas tree lights, and they look so real you can imagine you're seeing Disneyland park at night. There's Sleeping Beauty's Castle, and a special lion light up that looks almost as real as the lions in Walt Disney's new True Life Adventure Technicolor picture, The African Lion. Altogether, there are 18 different light-ups, and here's how you get them. Just look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Wheaties, Cheerios, Kicks, Tricks, and Sugar Jets. The Mickey Mouse sign tells you that there's a Disneyland Park light-up on the back of each package, free of extra cost. Start collecting Disneyland Park light-ups right now. Just look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Tricks, Sugar Jets, Kicks, Cheerios, and Wheaties. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Away! The Lone Ranger and Tonto, on their way to the border town of Nogales, stopped at a crossroad some distance north of their destination. Oh, oh, oh. The masked man said... Tonto, I'll leave you here and ride west to Fort Marshall. Uh, you take message to Colonel Blair about engines? Yes. You ride south and make camp below El Centro Pass. You mean Rock Bend, where we make camp before. Yes, that's right. I'll meet you there day after tomorrow. We'll visit our friend Frank Norton and go on to Nogales. Ah. Me meet you in camp. Adios, Tonto. Come on, Phil. Adios. Get him up, Scout. At dawn the next morning, Tonto passed through the sleeping town of Rockmont City and continued south through El Centro Pass to the campsite. Easy, Scout. Easy. Six miles below the pass. In Rockmont City, five hours after Tonto had passed through, outlaws Lyle Bozeman and Pug Frisbee robbed the bank and shot the clerk who tried to bar their escape. Easy. Steady, Steady now. Come on, get up, get up, get up. They then sped southward, far in advance of the posse that pursued them. The posse lost the trail of the outlaws and divided into small groups trying to relocate the escape route of the bandits. That night, deputies Jim Fleming and Bob McCann, after emerging from the southern end of El Centro Pass, saw a faint reddish glow among the trees atop a nearby hill. They ground hitched their horses, made their way to the summit, and there, from a hiding place in the shrubbery, saw the bank robbers standing by a campfire. McCann whispered, Jim, we found them. Yeah. I'll crawl around to the other side of the clearing. In about five minutes, you make noises here. All right. When the crooks start in this direction to investigate, I'll move in behind them. <laughs> Out 
Outlaws Lyle Bozeman and Pug Frisbee, confident that they had escaped pursuit, spent some time near their campfire. Bozeman was talking. Pug, we're less than 50 miles from the galleys now. The horses hold up. We should cross into Mexico the day after the morning. July. Did you hear that? Yeah. It came from over in those bushes. Get your gun on the pug. All right. Let's see what that was. Come on. The bandits stopped for a moment when they reached the brush. And at that instant, Deputy Jim Fleming stepped from the bushes behind them. But as he moved, he tripped over a tree root hey, and accidentally just charged the gun in his hand. The outlaws turned, guns blazing. Fleming, wounded, pitched forward on his face as Deputy McCann, who, hearing the gunfire, burst recklessly into the camp. Three guns, three bullets, and two men fell. Deputy Bob McCann and outlaw Pug Frisbee. The panic-stricken horses plunged into the underbrush and disappeared downhill into the darkness. Lyle Bozeman walked to where the two deputies lay, saw that they were alive though unconscious, and then turned to Pug Frisbee, who, holding his left shoulder, staggered to his feet. Hey, look, look at my shoulder. Here, let me see it. It's bleeding a lot, but you're not hurt bad. It's just a flesh wound. Put a handkerchief against it, and the bleeding will stop. Hey, hey, all right. Hey, Lyle. Those two hombres are deputies from Rockmont, aren't they? Yeah, they must be part of a posse. Part? You mean you don't think these two are alone? Why should they be? They picked up our trail. The others must be with them. And they must be near. we got to get away pronto. Hey, Lyle, where are you going? I'm getting a haversack with the money in it. And I'm going to take the badges off these lawmen's shirts. Yeah, they might come in handy. Lyle, all that shooting scared the horses. They ran away. They'll never find them in the dark. No, and we're not going to try might run into the posse if we did. Come on, Lyle. We're hoofing it right now. The following morning, Toto was preparing breakfast when he heard the bushes being parted and saw two men approaching. The taller of the two men wore a haversack slung across his shoulder, and on his shirt front was a silver badge. The second man also wore a badge, but his shirt was dark with bloodstains. Toto, concerned, greeted them. Aye. Hi there. Hi. And then said, You hurt? You have trouble? Yeah, Injun, we had trouble. We're deputy sheriffs from Rockmont City, and last night we were ambushed by outlaws. Got me in the shoulder, and they shot the horses from under us. We've been walking all night. We're tired and hungry. Oh, come, sit for fire. A me, big shoulder... Then you eat. Yeah, that's mighty decent of you, Injun. What's this about fixing my shoulder? Uh, well, me get bandaged. Oh. Huh. <laughs> well, Pug, what do you think about that, huh? He acts like a smart hombre. Want to knock him out now and take his horse? No. Oh. Wait till he fixes your arm. And wait till we eat. Toto cleaned and bandaged Pug Frisbee's shoulder wound, then prepared a hearty breakfast for the bogus lawman. When they finished eating, Lyle Bozeman rose to his feet, winked slyly at his partner, and moved quietly behind the Indian. Toto, intent on the campfire, didn't see Bozeman's arm raise in the air, but he heard the motion and turned. Too late. The outlaw's pistol crashed on Toto's skull. I stole Lyle. He's out cold. All right, Pug, get those ropes. We're going to tie and gag this redskin, too. The outlaws, talking as they bound Tonto's ankles and wrists, were unaware that the Indians' eyelids flickered for a split second as they completed the job. They continued to talk, and Bozeman said, Hug, you gag him. Sure. No sense taking chances, even with an engine. Here we are. Now let's get the horse and take off. Yeah. No lie. Too bad we haven't another one. We'll get one at the first ranch we come to. There's enough money in this haversack of mine to buy a stable full of horses. You mean we'll buy a horse? Yeah, if we have to. The main thing for us right now is to get to Mexico. Come on, let's get that horse. All right, here, fella. Hold still, huh? 
Hey, hold still, you crazy galoot. Hold still. He's like a bronze. Yeah, all right, grab hold of him, Pug. Pull him down. Yeah. Use your good arm and grab him. Hold Scout on. resisted the efforts of the two men to hold him, but finally they succeeded in quieting the animal. Then they mounted double. Easy, steady, boy. Steady. You ready? Yeah, come on. Get him. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When Bill's at bat, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue... Less than two hours after outlaws Lyle Bozeman and Pug Frisbee headed south, the Lone Ranger rode into camp. Oh, oh. When he saw Tonto lying on the ground, bound and gagged, his eyes lit in angry surprise. Is this a he leaped from his saddle and ran to his Indian companion. Tonto, what happened to you? Let me get that gag from your mouth. There. Oh, oh. Thanks, Kimasabi. Thanks. Only glad you come now. Tell me what happened while I cut these ropes. As the Lone Ranger severed the ropes that bound Tonto's wrists and ankles, the Indian told of the attack by the two badge-wearing men and of their riding away together on his horse scout. Tonto ended, saying, And me hear him say, Then buy horse, then go to Mexico. Me think them lie when them say them deputy sheriffs. They did lie, Tonto. Last night they shot two of Tom Warden's deputies and stole their badges. They're outlaws. Now, how you know them shoot deputies? Steal badges. Because I found those deputies a few hours ago, Tonto. Just after I came through El Centro Pass. They were lying in an open field near the base of the hill where the crook shot them. Them dead? No. Luckily, one of them, Jim Fleming, regained consciousness before I arrived. He was able to give first aid to himself and his partner, Bob McCann. Ah, uh, me. Remember that. They managed to get down from the hill all right. They'd left their horses hobbled near the trail, and they tried to reach them. The effort was too much, and that's when they collapsed. Uh, why outlaw shoot him? The Lone Ranger told of the holdup, chase, and gun duel as related to him by the wounded deputies. Then concluded, After I treated Fleming and McCann, I placed them on their horses and told them to ride here slowly. Them hurt cells. Them cry ride fast. Exactly. I said you'd feed them and give them shelter when they arrived. And that while they rested, you'd ride and get a doctor. May not do that now with... Scout gone. Use one of their horses, Tonto, after they get here. Uh-huh. I'll ride on and try to catch those crooks. I have an idea. I'll bring them and Scout back here before the day's over. We hope so, Kimis. Two men on a horse can't make fast time, even on an animal as strong and speedy as Scout. But I'll leave you now and start after those two. <laughs> Otto's horse scout showed almost human resentment toward the men who imposed such a heavy burden on his back as they rode him. His behavior was balky and his pace slow. More than four hours passed before outlaws Lyle Bozeman and Pug Frisbee came to the first house they'd seen since leaving Toto. Oh, oh, oh. They stopped near the small ranch-type dwelling. And Pug Frisbee slid from the back of the horse onto the ground. As he did, Scout suddenly snorted and kicked at the outlaw, missing him by inches. Hey, hey Riley tried to kick me. No! Oh, hold still! No! Oh, hold still! Or up. <laughs> jump off, Riley! Kill you! Jump off! Oh, no! Hey! Oh! 
Oh, I told you he'd throw you. Oh. He's running away now, back the way we came. Look at him travel. As Scout headed for the trail, the door of the house opened and a young girl emerged, hurrying toward the fallen Lyle Bozeman. Oh, my goodness. What happened? No. We heard the noise inside and... Oh, you poor man, you've been hurt. Oh, yeah. It's... It's my back. He'll be all right, ma'am. Here, let me help you, lad. I mean, Bill. Get your hands off me. Oh, I, I just noticed your badge. You're lawman, aren't you? I, uh, yes, ma'am. I'm Bill Smithers, and this is Pete Brown. We're the deputy sheriff from Rockmont City. Oh, are you? Daddy will certainly be surprised and glad to see you. Daddy! Daddy, come out here! What's all the noise, Mary? What are you yelling about? What the... Look the who it is. Marshal Norton. Bozeman! Grizzly! Mary, what are these varmints doing here? Well, Get off, Mary! Don't touch that gun, Marshal! They just gun, Pug. Daddy, these men are deputy sheriffs from Rockmont. They're outlaws. That's what they are. Give me that gun, Marshal. Give me it. Take it, you filthy rat. If I weren't afraid what might happen to Mary, I'd fight you before giving up like this. <laughs> How does it feel, Marshal? Having your gun taken from you for a change. Hey, they really are outlaws? The worst kind. I sent Bozeman to jail in Yuma. Oh. And as for this coyote Frisbee, he's the rotten... Oh. Shut up. Turn around, Marshal, and go into the house. You too, miss. we got to protect ourselves. A lone ranger, following the hoof prints left by Scout on the trail, had been riding hard since leaving Tonto. Presently, to his surprise, he saw Scout approaching. Oh, oh easy. Scout, come here. Here, Scout. That's it. <laughs> easy, boy. Steady, easy now. Easy. The Lone Ranger spoke soothingly to the horse, calmed him, and then turned him around on the trail. Scout, those crooks can't be far away. We're going to backtrack on your trail and see where you came from. All right, come on, Scout. Come on, Scout. Come on, Inside Norton's house, Lyle Bozeman held a gun on the retired lawman, while Pug Frisbee tied Mary's wrists behind her back. Uh, lady, I don't like doing this, but like Lyle said, we've got to protect ourselves. We've had enough trouble already. We're too near the border to let you or your old man Why stop. Why don't you stop yapping, Pug? Get finished there and tie up the marshal. You'll yeah. regret this day as long as you live. Marshal, it's too bad we had to run into you like this. I don't... Those are horses outside Lyle. More than one. Well, Bozeman, what are you going to do now? I'll tell you, Norton. We're going to the next room, but we'll keep our guns on your daughter. You go to the door and send whoever's there away if you want this girl to live. Outside the house, the lone ranger, prepared for trouble, held a gun in his right hand as he knocked on the door with his left. The door opened halfway. Frank Norton stood there, and his eyes opened wide as an involuntary gasp came from his lips. But he recovered quickly, and before the Lone Ranger could speak, the old man said, Fellas, stay in your horses and don't bother coming inside. The meeting's off. The Lone Ranger, grasping the situation, moved close to the ex-marshal, and in a disguised voice said, You hear that, men? The meeting's off. The Bozeman Frisbee inside. Yes, they're holding guns on Mary. I'm uh, busy right now, or I'd ask him. I'll get in touch with you later. Well, when's the new meeting going to take place? Uh, tomorrow. Where are they? In the room on the far side where the window is. Uh, I'll ride down to your place later, Bert. You and Henry get the books in order. As Frank Norton continued to talk in a loud voice as if speaking to a group, the Lone Ranger moved away from the front door and hurried to the side of the house. <laughs> Uh, 
Behind the curtain in the side room, Bozeman and Frisbee held their guns on Mary while Norton continued talking. Hey, Lyle, why doesn't that old windbag shut up? He's been rattling words for a couple of minutes now. Stop your gun. Hey, hey, Lyle, behind us. At the window, a masked man, shoot! Oh, my man! He knocked the gun out of my hand. Now stand still. You tricked us, Norton. Frank, pick up their gun. Keep them covered. I'll come around to the front door. The crooks were taken back to camp, and the loot was taken with them. The Lone Ranger and Frank Norton, leaving Mary at the ranch, waited in the camp until Toto returned with a doctor, who treated the wounded deputies, Jim Fleming and Bob McCann, who had arrived there hours earlier. The doctor, when he finished with the men, said, These young fellas received wonderful first aid. I think they'll be well enough to ride horses, in case they wish to leave here. We do want to leave, Doctor. We want to go to Rockmont City with those prisoners and the money they stole. Well, then do it. Marshal Norton will go with you to make sure everything remains under control. Right, Marshal? I'll be happy to. This is like old times having you get me out of a fix. And it'll be like old times seeing those crooks put behind bars. <laughs> Look at Bozeman and Frisbee tied up over there, sitting against the rocks. <laughs> did you ever see a sorry <laughs> affair? <laughs> I never did. <laughs> yes. Ralph, ready now. Good. Gentlemen, this situation is well in hand now. We'll be going on to Nogales. You mean you're not coming with us? You don't need us, Jim. Come on, Toto. Oh. Easy, Frisbee. Adios. Goodbye. Goodbye. Let's go. Gentlemen, I don't know many people in these parts. I'm just a doctor. I'm not familiar with anyone who isn't a patient. But I heard and saw enough to realize that the masked man is someone remarkable. Who is he? Doctor, he's the one who captures outlaws for old lawmen and young lawmen and makes them look good. He's the Lone Ranger. Well, 